we are now welcoming, not to the stage, but to the video monitor, John Elkin, who, if you don't know him, is the chairman of XRO. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm just doing a little potted bio, so hang on one sec. Uh, chairman of XOR, the company that owns Ferrari, as well as Stellantis, which owns a number of other car brands that you guys have all heard of. Also, Christian Louboutin, The Economist, and a whole lot of tech and healthcare tech companies. But we are here to talk mostly about fashion and F1. So John, I'm sorry you couldn't be here with us, but you have a pretty good reason. Do you want to tell everyone what it is? Yeah, today uh, the Tour de France is actually in Italy and it's going to come through Turin, which is where I live. So it's a very sport related reason why unfortunately I cannot be with you, Vanessa, and, and all of you. But thank you for making this possible. And you are wearing a very fetching hoodie. Can you stand up and model it for us, please? Actually, this is a Ferrari one, which is done by with this also with this material called Q Cycle. So it's not only fashionable, but it's also actually very sustainable. So it's done with old Ferrari tires. Oh, cool! It looks much better than the tires. I gotta say. All right. All right. So I'm really glad. I'm really glad that you are here because, in fact, in 2021, you held the first fashion show in Italy after the pandemic lockdowns, and it was in your factory, the Ferrari factory in Maranello, and it was the de debut of the Ferrari fashion line, right? Not the Ferrari merch line, but the actual runway fashion line, which made you the first F1 owner, sports brand owner, as far as I know, to use a sports brand as a springboard into fashion. And so what I want to know is what kind of investment did that actually require on your part? Why did you make it? And how in the world did you convince your board to make it? It was a very special moment. As, as you rightly said, that was the first fashion show, live fashion show that happened after the pandemic in Italy. And uh, we, we had been working very hard during that that difficult moment to try and see how we could develop also ferrari within more more than just a category of sports cars within the luxury uh, sector and it felt a, a nice renaissance moment uh, to really have in our factory a fashion show it was a a very special uh, show where we had back then a lot of Ferrari logos, uh, which as you can see now are much less part of, of what we do in, in fashion and, and luxury. And the idea was really to make sure that we could have creativity in house. We have over time gained more and more creativity. So for example, when we started our sports cars, it, it was done with external help from Pininfarina, and then we internalized our creativity. And we have gone through the through a very similar process, not applying creativity from our licensing partners or a manufacturing partners, but really trying to look at what we do uh, at Ferrari, what we have done, and and try and make products that are uniquely Ferrari, and that applies for most of, of what we're doing now, Vanessa. But why in the world even start a fashion brand in the first place? I mean, what, why was that the thing that you felt was the best next expression of Ferrari values? We felt it was a very natural uh, evolution of, of what we were going to do. We already had, through our merchandising activity that is done for our millions of fans everywhere, quite a large experience within within retail and apparel and being able to really distinguish what we do in similar categories, but looking at similar levels of quality and uniqueness that are cars was, was a very natural expression. And also in terms of just 
that that specific moment being being in in that in that conversation with the industry uh, was was a very unique opportunity to explain what Ferrari is, which is beyond racing, beyond sports cars, and has been now a more and more important part of lifestyle of not only our clients, but also uh, many, many fans. Did you have people in the company who thought you were completely nuts? I think that more than nuts, how deliberate we were about that, right, Vanessa? Like that, that was the big question. Was this just a moment uh, which could explain itself by what we had been living? Uh, or was this really a, a focus that we as a company wanted to pursue? And, and if I look at Miami, the spring, where we actually had the, four, the free souls of, of our company, we were there for the Formula One GP, so the racing soul, we launched the 12 Cilindri, which is our latest sports car. And we also had a, a very, a very uh, nice event with a capsule that was made. Everything was completely sold. And in parallel to that, we had these blue caps that we made for, for our fans and they were immediately sold and they're just going crazy still now on eBay's and other auction places. Okay, I mean, it's it's been about three years now, right, since the beginning. Um, I think the, the runway shows, which I go to every season, uh, have had relatively mixed reviews, right? Even Vogue once wrote, why is Italy's greatest, greatest automotive mark trying to act like a fashion house? Um, but this morning I got an email from the, the BET award showing Coleman Domingo wearing full Ferrari head to toe um, suit. So one of the things that the CEO of the brand said at launch was that he expected the fashion line to, in about 10 years, I think it was, make up 10% of the profits of Ferrari. Last year, that was 1.225 billion euros. Are you actually on track for that? Do you expect that to happen? We, we believe that the, uh, the, the lifestyle activities of, of Ferrari is definitely on track. And uh, we, we have been very pleased to see the level of traction that some of our products have been having. So for example, the Maranello clutch, uh, which we launched recently and is actually made in Maranello as, as a bag, which, which has the form of the, the speed forms of, of our cars has been incredibly successful. So we do see a lot of uh, passion, uh, both from our supporters and our clients uh, towards Ferrari. And we're very happy to see that what we're able to give them is definitely getting their interest. What I'd like to note though, is we are also capturing uh, interest from who was not a, a Ferrari uh, fan or, or client. And more particularly, Vanessa, what's been very good for our company, which has this, this very masculine identity that we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of women being incredibly attracted by, by what we're proposing to them. Do, do you actually have numbers on that? Can you quantify it? Yeah, I mean, today, most of the sales that we're doing within, within the high-end part of li lifestyle is that large majority, uh, large majority are, are women that, that are buying what we do. Yeah, but women can like race cars. I mean, why, women why would they? Why? Women do race cars. It's just a question of proportions that as of now, the proportions has definitely been more skewed toward, towards men. Uh, and that was also representative if you look at, at our customers or, or fans. The good news is that's definitely growing and it's also growing from a demographic standpoint. So we're actually seeing a lot of teenagers very happy to, to wear uh, our t-shirts or hoodies and, uh, and, and, and that, that's gaining a lot, a lot of traction. So are you saying that the high fashion line has a trickle down effect to the more merchy side of things? Uh, I would say m more, more than it's part of the same collections. Um, so the trickle down is also being 
being carried towards products that I would not define as merchy. In some ways, the merchandising part, Vanessa, has really been now more and more focused to what the technical equipment that the team has is, is really what we, we present. And that also has been changing. Miami was an example, but we also had a very nice moment in, in Monaco where we won the Grand Prix, what Le Mans recently, where we actually have for those specific occasions, we design around those occasions, which make, makes it also very valuable who's there to actually has, have something they bring home from that moment. Um, has Drive to Survive actually like helped and had any effect on sales for you, do you think? I don't think. I think Drive to Survive has had a great effect on, on Formula One um, and the sport definitely in, in your country has, has gained a huge amount of traction on the back of that. What have you learned in the last three years and, and have you made any mistakes with the, with the fashion? Well, making mistakes is, is always part of learning and, uh, and definitely we are very happy to make mistakes and continue making mistakes, particularly a company like ours who is an innovative company. If you, if you don't make mistakes, it means that you're not innovating. I think that what we have been learning is, is more precision around uniqueness. Uh, both the materials that we use, uh, making sure that our Italian identity is very clear, making sure that what we do is not only looking good, but it's also wearing, it's, it's also nice to wear. And, and the good thing is that we are a company which has a lot of history uh, and we're always adding to, to our history and the recent years have definitely been with many mistakes from which we learned a lot. So we encourage making mistakes, not too many, Vanessa, but I think you need to have a good amount of them. Uh, give me one example of a mistake and what you learned from it, specific. Yeah, I, I think like caps are a big deal for us, you know, and, uh, and just working on caps uh, there are many different formats of caps. And so we, we actually uh, were pretty standardized when, when we were starting uh, our work on caps and we have since been developing and adding to our caps to make them more and more unique. Uh, so that was an area, uh, for example, that we've improved. Uh, th there has been a lot of tradition within leather goods around what we have done historically on, on luggage for our customers. And so how we've reinterpreted some of our, uh, some of, some of our uh, leather goods uh, work and the evolutions we've had in, in that has been very interesting. The supplier base you have when you start small, you'd have more, a more artisanal approach as things develop in a way which you need to produce more, you need to have a different type of suppliers. So the mistakes are both in terms of you know, conception, but equally on, on how you make sure to, to be able to make the highest quality possible. Okay, I have, I have one last question and I'm gonna open this up to the audience who will ask a question, I guess, via, via me to you. Um, so you signed Lewis Hamilton for the next racing season, right, starting in 2025. That's someone who has an enormously high profile, both in fashion and in F1. Was the fashion an element in that? Will you work with him on fashion? Is he going to play a role in that? So that's a, um, that's a very good question. Um, Lewis is coming to Ferrari to, to win. He wants to be the world champion who's won most uh, Formula One championship. And that's really the, the highest motivation uh, that Lewis has and he's still very, very much engaged in racing. And we are very, very much engaged in, in making that work the, the, the best possible way. He definitely has developed uh, a lot of interests of which also a very, very, very good taste. And it's a, among established brands with whom he's working, has worked, will work, and also insurgent brands 
which he encourages. So the conversations that we'll have will definitely be ones that we believe both uh, Lewis and ourselves are, are going to be very interesting because of the phases in which he is and we are. But the priority is, is to make sure that the racing side works well. And in some ways, if that does work well, all the rest is so much easier. So, so, so you didn't build that he has to wear a Ferrari at certain times into his contract? No, I think it would be very constraining uh, for everyone, right? And one of the big, the, the big talents Lewis has is, is really his ability in being very versatile. And, and, that's, and that's what also is, is going to be good in the conversations that we will be having on that. But the core of what we want to achieve and the priority is really on track. What happens off track is, is a wonderful opportunity for both Ferrari and Lewis. Okay, well, that's so something to keep tuned. an eye on. <laughs> exactly. All right, questions from the floor for John. Yes, in the front. So with the questions, I'll, I'll put a more Ferrari <laughs> on brand. Perfect. John, last year we saw a global agreement at the United Nations that we are now transitioning away from fossil fuels, which is very exciting for the healthy future of all of us. I'm curious how Ferrari sees their future and their role in the just transition. Could you hear that? Yeah, very well. That's, that's a really important topic for us. Uh, we have actually been the most um, progressive company in terms of, of standards that we've put ourselves. So by 2030, we'll be car carbon neutral. We inaugurated a week ago uh, the building, uh, which is the most advanced um, building for our manufacturing. And it's state of the art in terms of what makes the combination of people, nature, and technology work in the most cohesive and, uh, and, and harmonious way. So we are a company that is truly committed and engaged to make sure that the difficulties we need to, uh, we need to address are being done. Other than the tires, are you using any other materials from the automotive brand in your clothing? The, uh, the clutch, the bag I was mentioning, uses the paint, and we're going to go through different technologies around paint to make it also the more and more environmentally friendly. And not only we're trying to uh, recoup some of the materials from the cars, uh, like the tires, but also like leather, how can we reuse some of the leather? So there's a lot of innovation that's happening, which will not only benefit what we do within our different products, but equally what we do with, with our main product, which are sports cars. Another question? Anyone? I have more, so, okay, one more. There is someone. Okay. Um, John Naomi Schiff, you may have heard my voice. I don't know, I doubt you can see me on Sky Sports F1. Um, obviously a great decision to sign Lewis Hamilton because from one point of view, yes, seven time world champion. But as we are here talking about sports and the, the collaboration with fashion, Lewis really opening doors for all the other athletes in motorsport to express themselves via fashion. I'm without a doubt sure that he will bring a whole new demographic to your team. But on that note, I'd love to know what you guys are doing to make sure that you're catering to the female audience, which today is 40% in Formula One, and how are they being represented through your brand? So we, we first of all, we, we want to make sure that uh, the, the feminine part of Ferrari is one that exists and that we care and that we, we value. And getting to the number that you just mentioned, 40%, we, we hope it just grows. We are the first company in the whole luxury sector that had equal pay certification. So this is something we not only care about, but we take extremely seriously and it starts by ourselves. So we make sure that within the company, uh, we are a company that is a company that values everyone uh, who works. And what we do 
despite, as I mentioned before, we definitely have a very masculine image uh, of what we do, that doesn't mean that it's, it's for everyone. And the opportunity that Formula One is, is giving uh, to make sure that we have a broader audience, not only in terms of demographics, but also gender, is, is really important. I would also like to, Naomi, to highlight, as you know, we're also thinking a lot about how we can include more women pilots and uh, around our other activities in motorsports with minor series, we are being more and more deliberate about trying to have uh, more women uh, that will drive with us. And so that, that I hope is going to be something that we'll be also seeing very interesting uh, opportunities coming out of that. Great, thank you. I have, oh, okay, one more question. Hi, John, I have a question. Um, we saw like inside Ferrari, like the fashion and lifestyle is very, very important. Um, we are talking how athletes like pilot inside the equerry are going to evolve because they will have um, a moment to decide between their personal contract and the growing of Ferrari style. Do you push in their personal contract some exclusivity or how this is going to work? Very good question. Uh, we, we believe that w within the, the requirements that uh, who works at Ferrari on the racing front, so the way they, they dress, that's, that's really how they need to be dressed and it's very much dictated by our sponsors and our licensees. And within that frame, the creativity that we're trying to get is one where we would include them. In terms of what we do in addition to that, we don't have exclusivity. So if our drivers want to drive any type of cars, collaborate with any type of luxury companies, we will tend to be open because what we've learned is in restricting it, we also restrict the opportunity set for us as, as a company. And what we really want is them to want to work with us because they think our cars are great. And so they're excited to have our cars. They think what we do is is really wonderful. And, and that's more the relationship that we've had and we'd like to continue. When you start constraining it and making it very much closed, we feel that that in some ways reduces the opportunity for them as athletes and for us as a company. That's interesting. Okay, I have one last question and then we're gonna let you go back to the bicycles. <laughs> um, if this works with Ferrari, you know, if the fashion line really does fulfill all the plans and the strategies you have for it, is this something that you see as transferable to your other brands? You know, is it transferable to your other automotive brands, which are also extremely well known, or Juventus, or is Louboutin going to be collaborating with all of them? You know, is are there learnings from this experience that will then apply to other parts of the group, or do you see this as a kind of one-off? And if so, what makes Ferrari special? Ferrari is, is really one of a kind in terms of company. It has from its origin to racing, to its evolution, to sports cars and lifestyle, a unique uh, opportunity of really being very exclusive to what it does in terms of the sports cars, but also very inclusive to the universal racing spirit. And so that allows you to have a very large canvas on which you can derive your creativity. And it also is a company that has strong emotions, strong passion, and strong sense of belonging, which is why today's sport is so important because within a world, and you're all in France at the moment, but a world which is clearly more divided, there are not that many unifiers. And in some ways, sports and a company like Ferrari is a big unifier. So I think that is something which has a tremendous value, there's a tremendous passion, and we need to make sure to be able to give that possibility to many. Other, other sports companies, like for example, Juventus, you definitely are going to see more collaborations. We had uh, interesting ones in, in the past that, that we've done. Um, we will continue doing them, but they don't have the legitimacy to be 
to be in 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 uh, to be a full fledged uh, company in terms of what what they can provide. But I have no doubt that what is important through sports is that you can reach a very large audience and you can find unifying factors. But no Alfa Romeo fashion line in the future. It's it, it's car car companies will tend to be mainly car companies, right? And what's unique about Ferrari is it's not a, a car company. It's it's a very unique company of its own. And and so that's why I don't think you'll be seeing Porsche, Alfa Romeo that that will be looking at this. Probably Jeep among the brands we have is the one that we've seen more interest around the opportunity of being, you know, outdoors and the whole adventure spirit that Jeep provides. And so there you, you can see different in intersections that we've been experiencing. And there's a very big following of, of Jeep lovers. Um, so that probably would be, uh, Vanessa, where uh, as a brand uh, that, that we have is the one where I do think there are interesting adjacencies. Well, that is something I will be looking out for. <laughs> Thanks so much, John. It was great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Have fun.